I purposely held off on reviewing King Kong vs. Godzilla because I was waiting for Legendary's Godzilla vs. Kong. Now that the greatest rematch of the century is finally upon us, I can finally talk about a film that I've been waiting to review. Like many fans, I grew up with the American version, but I find the original Japanese version to be the superior version. No, that is not me being one of those fanboys that automatically sides with the Japanese version because it's the original. Despite its flaws, the Japanese version is arguably the better film. Unlike the American version, the plot is more fluid, coherent, and easy to follow. Rather than relying on pointless exposition, the Japanese version relies on a character-driven narrative. The film is slightly more humoristic than past Godzilla and King Kong films, but it works because the film's satirical commentary is reliant on the humor. However, I wouldn't outright call this film a comedy. Just like Marvel movies, the film simply has lots of humor sprinkled throughout. The script does a simple yet coherent job of bringing Godzilla and Kong together, but it fails to explain why they fight other than Kong senses Godzilla, but that's it, and Sekizawa randomly introduces an additional theme and concludes it in the same sentence, and the end result is more hysterical than thought-provoking. As for the characters, there is never a dull moment thanks to their chemistry and comedic timing. Tadao Takashima does an excellent job of balancing multiple emotions for Sakurai. As a result, Takashima nearly succeeds in making Sakurai the most relatable character of the film. Yu Fujiki succeeds in delivering a memorable, comedic performance without ever making his character come off as dumb or the butt of jokes. His chemistry with Takashima also feels impressively natural. Their scenes together never feel like performances. Senkichi Omura only has a couple scenes, but he has one of the most memorable moments thanks to his comedic delivery. Ichiro Arashima as Mr. Tako is truly the iconic element of the film and arguably the best character. Arashima outshines everyone with an idiocentric yet quirky performance that is unmatched by any other Toho actor. My biggest gripe is that his arc ends abruptly. We never see the lessons he endures that leads him to willingly let King Kong go home. He just turns on a dime. Mai Hama and Kenji Sahara are mostly plot devices, but surprisingly, they're given some level of responsibility that benefits the plot. Akihiko Harada is pointless, he's just there to deliver exposition, so it's no surprise that his lecture at the end is equally as pointless. The one thing I find jarring is how Godzilla and Kong are treated. They're both depicted as destructive forces of nature sometimes, and those are the best moments. However, at other times, they're depicted like cartoons. A very poor decision because their cinematic sophistication is sacrificed in favor of baffling inconsistency for the sake of cheap thrills for children. Akira Fukube's score is not the best, but it's solid enough since we get Godzilla's iconic theme for the first time and other appealing tracks. Unfortunately, the score gets repetitive and many tracks overstay their welcome, but to be honest, I prefer Ifukube's repetitive music over the alternative and nauseating music in the American version. The film's pacing is surprisingly fluid and natural, for the most part. However, splitting up the Seahawks scenes was a poor choice. It hurts the flow of the first act's pacing by switching back and forth between the characters and the Seahawk. It results in a jarring editorial mess. The special effects are not Eiji Tsuburaya's best. The puppets look cheap and unconvincing. Some of the stop motion effects are a bit grating, but the stop motion tentacles don't look too bad. But King Kong's fight with the octopus is not just brief, but poorly done. It seems like little effort was made to hide the flaws. The suits look terrible, especially King Kong's suit. There are times where the arms are disturbingly long and later on suddenly become short. The design of the nipple area is embarrassing, and the design of the face doesn't fare any better. It's insanely grotesque, especially the puppet. Godzilla is kinda ugly too, but not in the same way as King Kong. This design tends to get flack for being ugly, but I actually like this design because it's ugly. I even own the Bandai Museum figure of this Godzilla. I don't know why, but there is an irresistible charm I find about this design. I also love that he kind of resembles a Komodo dragon at times, especially here. Still, there are some other pretty good effects. The tank battle is one of the better sequences thanks to everything being placed and filmed at the right angles. 
Many of the matte paintings are surprisingly convincing. The scale and composite shots with the real octopus are very well done, and the Tokyo miniature set is beautifully detailed and well made. Overall, the Japanese version of King Kong vs. Godzilla is flawed in many respects, but the general experience is a fun, insanely entertaining kaiju flick. Unlike the American version, the narrative flows with better clarity, the characters are a bit more refined, the humor is more natural, and its satirical commentary on commercialism is a bit more clearer. The Japanese version has remained officially unavailable outside of Japan since 1962. Because of this, international fans, such as myself, grew up on the American version and had to rely on bootlegs in order to watch the film in its original form. That is until 2019, when the Criterion Collection achieved the impossible and made the Japanese version officially available on Blu-ray in North America for the first time. Many of you are asking, what's the difference? Aren't they the same movie? Yes, it technically is, and no, it's a different monster altogether. But that's a discussion for a separate review. I award the Japanese version of King Kong vs. Godzilla 2.5 stars out of 4.